Next game we're talking about is a Big 12 game. Number 21, Kansas State at number 25, Kansas, 7 p.m. Eastern Time on FS1. This is one of the biggest games in the Sunflower Showdown's history. That's the name for the rivalry between Kansas and Kansas State. So they've met every season since 1911. That means it's the fourth longest uninterrupted rivalry in the FBS right now, right behind Wisconsin, Minnesota, NC State, Wake Forest, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, which will be ending after this year. So Kansas State, Kansas will move up to number three uh, because Bedlam is leaving with Oklahoma, you know, leaving the Big 12 for the SEC. And even though they've met um, in a, this is their 121st meeting, even though they've met 121 times, this is only the second time ever that these two teams are meeting as ranked opponents. Uh, the last time that happened was in 1995. So this is only the second time ever that both Kansas and Kansas State are ranked in the top 25 in their matchup. So they've met 121 times now, and this is still one of the biggest matchups in that in the Sunflower Showdown's history. Yeah, and I think a big story really is you've got two excellent head coaches, Chris Kleiman, Lance Leipold. They've been rumored for a lot of other jobs, and this, and for good reason. These are two; these are two solid football teams, and it's not just. They're, the funny thing is, they're not the most like quarterback centric teams. Jalen Daniels keeps getting hurt. Will Howard, Will Howard's been up and down, and and kind of had the the rotation going with Avery Johnson for a bit. Although they've cooled off that, he seems to have regained the trust. He had the best game of his career last week. Um, you, but you've got some, you got some like well rounded like especially in the running game, just some balance with these teams. It's, it's, they're, they're both a little weird, but they, these are two coaches that have built good football teams. You know, I, I don't know that there's a ton of elite players on each, but they, they just do as you know, schematically and they have balance at like Kansas state has four guys who can carry the ball. Jason, even with Jason Bean, man, Kansas competes. And, and yeah. last week they really only lost that game because he got hurt. I believe it was 13 to 10 was it yeah yeah i mean thir 13 to 10 yeah, their defense held texas tech to 13 points and 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 lost i mean that's you know if they had been in there they would have won that game too and the fact that two years in a row they compete with jalen daniels getting hurt both years i i think it's i i i can't commend these two coaches enough because every year both of these teams are they in the national title picture no but they go through adversity last year k-state won the big 12 everybody yep. forgets that and, and Kansas just keeps – they keep punching, man. Most teams lose – just like Arizona. Most teams lose your starting quarterback. You're a mess, you know, and, and they, they just keep punching. I, I, it's These are two fun teams to watch to watch because they just keep – they keep battling. They just they, – they, they're physical. They get after it up front. you got two solid offensive lines, and they just they, – they never – they they have moments and they just never they never quit. K State almost beaten Texas. Kansas upsets Oklahoma. The, it's you know and there's there's bumps along the way, but these two coaches they have their teams. They keep playing hard every week, and now you got them facing each other. It's going to be a lot of fun. So this is a big game for not only the rivalry but also maybe a little audition for both Kleiman and Leipold for the uh, Texas A and M job. I think I've heard their name both their names thrown around a lot for that job. I don't know if either of them will be the top candidates that can that Texas A and M ultimately goes for, but. If you win this game, Texas A&M might look at that and be like, oh, you know, maybe I'll take that guy. I don't know. The loser of this game I don't think will be a, a top candidate for the job. The winner of this game will be probably one of the candidates that Texas A&M really looks at. So that's a big, uh, big little, tiny little storyline, too, as for the offseason. So maybe the, the loser of this game, Kansas or Kansas State, would probably be happy that way they could keep their coach or at least won't have the risk and, of losing their coach. But And K-State, looking at it now, K-State still very much alive for the Big 12 title game. Mm-hmm. This is this is not this is for them still high stakes. They could very they could very well be the team. Uh, there's a lot to go here. There's, yeah, four teams with two losses, but they could very well get themselves a rematch with Texas. And I, I'm going to be honest with you, they without Jonathan Brooks now, they could beat Texas. They could have beaten them the first time if they had did, did a field goal unit had it right. Yeah, uh, honestly, that's that is not. I'll tell you what. If I'm Texas, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'd want the K State rematch any more than the Oklahoma one. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So, yeah, the big matchup for me is just basically Jason Bean and whether or not he's able to play. So, uh, I think that really hinges on Texas, uh, Kansas's chances in this game is, you know, he suffered a head injury in the second quarter against Texas Tech, did not return, ultimately resulted in a three-point loss. And with him 
with uh, Jalen Daniels now missing seven games this year with back tightness, and he's not going to be able to go for this week either. Kansas had to turn to their third-string quarterback, who's a true freshman. And not only is he a true freshman, uh, he is a walk-on as well. So shout out uh, Cole Ballard for representing our show here. But true freshman walk-on, man, that's not where you want to be for, for Kansas. And he only had a 54.5 passing grade in the loss. I mean, if he has to start in this game against Kansas State, uh, that's not a great sign for, for Kansas. So I think ultimately that it really hinges on whether or not Jason Bean, who is already their backup quarterback, will be able to go in this game. I will say, though, this week Lance Leipold said that he is, quote, very optimistic that Bean will be able to go this Saturday. So hopefully Jason Bean will be able to go um, in this game. And that way Cole Ballard, a true freshman walk-on, which we love, by the way, preferred walk-on. But at the same time, you, you really need Bean in this game to, to have a chance. So ultimately, Dolan, who do you have winning in one of the biggest games in the Sunflower Showdown's history. I don't know what's called that, to be honest with you. That's news to me. Um, um, I, I think you got two teams that are very similar, and I'm going to assume Bean plays, because if he doesn't play, it's it's K-State. Um, I'm going to assume Bean plays, yeah. and and I think this will be a solid game. The question for me is which run, what run defense shows up for these two teams. All right, Kansas State. Kansas State is not a great run D, 108th in the country in run D grade. Okay, Kansas has this inconsistent thing going. The last three weeks in run D grade, the 14th, the three weeks before that, they were the fifth worst in the country. So I, whichever front seven kind of shows up to stop the run, and if it's neither, then we've got a different element. Then you get into the passing game. You know, Will Howard, I believe the only two guys he's trailing in play-action passing grade, I believe it's Michael Penix and J.J. McCarthy. Wow. It's, he's third in the country in play action pass grade. It, check me. You, I might, you might have to check me on the names, but it was like two Heisman guys in front of him in play action pass grade. So if they get to their their the foundation of their offense and their play action, because Will Howard best game of his career last week regained his tr regained the trust of the staff clearly in the second half of that Texas game. You've you've got. Two dimensions, I think, with Kansas State. Now, Kansas can win. Devin Neal, if Jason Bean's playing, he can run the ball. He's good. Whichever team with more rushing yards in this game is probably going to win. That's that's just going to be the story. But I think the difference in the game is, it, even with Bean in there, is Will Howard. If he's going to stay hot like this and they get to the play action, although Kansas is a very good play action defending team, their secondary is not bad against the play action. I, I think I just trust both dimensions more with K-State. And it's on the road. It's going to be a tight game rivalry. These two teams are both really good. I'm going to take Kansas State 37-34. Um, to 34. Okay. I'm taking Kansas State as well. And to answer your question about uh, highest graded quarterbacks on play action, so number one is Jaden Daniels at 94.3. That's, That's right. And Michael Penix Jr. is number two at 93.2. And then right behind him is Will Howard at 93. So, yeah, he has been fantastic off of play action this year. I'm taking Kansas State as well. I think even with Jason Bean, I I'm taking Kansas State. I like what Will Howard is doing a lot. I like the ground game, the offensive line, Cooper Beebe, who we interviewed, by the way, one of my favorite interviews I've done so far. Uh, I'm taking K-State in this game, 34-27, um, to pull off the road victory and win in one of the biggest Sunflower showdowns. I love that name. That's I, I actually just learned that name, too, while doing research for this. That's, a that's one of the best rivalry names that we got, man, the Sunflower Showdown. I love that.